Hello. I'm Jim Ogden, the staff historian at Chickamauga and Chattanooga Nash Military Park. And as um, hopefully everybody is aware, this year is the 150th anniversary of the Civil War events in 1863, which includes for us here locally the overall campaign for Chattanooga and perhaps most recognizably the 150th anniversary of the actual Battle of Chickamauga, one of the biggest, bloodiest um, battles, part of one of the most important campaigns of the Civil War, a battle that unfolded on three September days in 1863 um, here in the Valley of West Chickamauga Creek. It's also a battle that, uh, that takes place over a much larger area than is often recognized. We're very fortunate that just a quarter of a century or so after the uh, Civil War and after the Battle of Chickamauga, that many of the men who had participated in the battle and in the overall campaign had the foresight to come back and begin the effort that resulted in the creation of Chickamauga and Chattanooga National Military Park. They, um, as they in, uh, conceived this idea in the 1880s, uh, envisioned this ground that they had hallowed that uh, quarter of a century earlier as being potentially a place of a giant outdoor memorial or place of commemor commemoration and also as a giant outdoor classroom. And as they began to um, envision what this National Military Park would be, they began to look at what ground it was that uh, these events of the campaign for Chattanooga, both the Battle of Chickamauga itself and also the subsequent battles for Chattanooga, the fighting on Lookout Mountain and Missionary Ridge, what ground of those actions might be preserved. Here on the, uh, the Chickamauga battlefield, with much of the area still then being uh, very rural, the veterans uh, initially in their discussions amongst themselves kind of envisioned a battlefield park that maybe would have been 10,000 acres in size. Eventually, when they got Congress to create the National Military Park by legislation in 1890, Congress authorized a Chickamauga battlefield area of 7,600 acres. Today, as we look at the Chickamauga battlefield unit, we get used to seeing um, the battlefield as that 5,300 acres that we do have preserved and set aside. But um, the veterans, um, as they created the National Military Park, once we're looking at a larger area and even a larger area, and then when you go back and look at what the participants of 1863 said about the Battle of Chickamauga. That battle, not only does it become one of the most costly of the war, but it is also a battle that some veterans envisioned unfolding over a piece of ground that would have been one of the largest of uh, all of the, of the Civil War battlefields. Vet, uh, men who fought in the battle in 1863 who might have initially been positioned up near Rossville Gap or on, along the old Federal Road, the uh, road that ran between Chattanooga, Rossville, Ringgold, and then on down into Georgia, they envisioned themselves um, when they were on that ground as being a part of the Battle of Chickamauga. Uh, in the same way, uh, soldiers who were engaged down south of what is today Chickamauga, Georgia, along the banks of Chickamauga Creek in the area of Glasses Mill, envisioned themselves in the Battle of Chickamauga as well. So the battle itself takes place over a much larger area. And as you begin to focus down on where the most decisive, the most important of the action occurred, you do get to the 5,300 acres that is preserved today as part of Chickamauga and Chattanooga National Military Park. But even some of those important parts of the, of the battle spilled off of that 5,300 acre reservation that is today uh, preserved as that memorial and place of commemoration and education that we hope that everybody uh, visits um, on a, a frequent and regular basis to learn a little bit more about um, our country's history. But as we um, live here in Fort Oglethorpe today and travel through, um, through this area, even as we do um, travel adjacent to the Battlefield Park, 
we often are on ground which very definitely was considered by uh, participants at the time as being part of the Battle of Chickamauga. Much of that battle is going to unfold along the corridor of the Lafayette Road, an important road in this region in um, the mid-19th century, um, a road, uh, of course, today as US-27 that is still important in our, um, our region's um, uh, commerce uh, as well. And so uh, there are actions along the Lafayette Road in what is today the city of Fort Oglethorpe which are important parts of how the battle unfolded. Now this Lafayette Road, what was often called in 1863 the State Road, was a road that had been developed when this was still Cherokee Indian land. In the 1820s and 1830s, as the state of Georgia began to um, exert their sovereignty over this, uh, this region, the state would um, more formally develop um, a road along what was certainly a series of Indian paths that ran um, from south to north towards Ross's Landing on the Tennessee River. Um, and by the uh, time of the Cherokee removal, 175 years ago this um, uh, year, 2013, the, the, this road was already known as the State Road. It joined up um, at Rossville Gap with another in, uh, very important, but today usually forgotten road, um, the old Federal Road, that road I mentioned a minute ago that stretched from what is today Chattanooga to Rossville, then over to Ringgold, and then on um, southward into Georgia. This Lafayette Road was to the old Federal Road, similarly, similar to uh, the way that U.S. 27 is related to Interstate 75 today. Um, Interstate 75 is the main north-south corridor into Georgia in this region. Um, today, U.S. 27 is another important north-south corridor into Georgia, just as in 1863 and even before the, uh, the Civil War, the Federal Road was the main road main road or the 1863 equivalent of I-75 and the Lafayette Road or State Road was um, in that same relationship as US-27 is today with I-75. So the import recognizing the importance of this Lafayette Road is very critical um, and that role or the importance of the role of the Lafayette Road in the immediate area of where the Battle of Chickamauga eventually unfolded began to appear more clearly to uh, participants um, on September the 7th, 8th, and 9th of 1863, a little more than 10 days before the actual Battle of Chickamauga. The Union Army advanced towards Chattanooga in late August um, on a broad front in multiple columns coming in over the mountains to the northwest of, um, of Chattanooga, um, conducting a feint and deception operation to create the impression that the main Union approach was from some point upstream of Chattanooga, while in actuality the main Union effort was coming in over the mountains out to the west and southwest of Chattanooga. And by the time the Confederate Army commander, Braxton Bragg, um, realized on September the 6th that those Union troops moving over first the Sand Mountain Range and then the Lookout Mountain Range at intervals of 20 and 40 miles southwest of Chattanooga, by the time Bragg realized that those Union columns were the main Union effort and not whatever was unfolding along the Tennessee River north or upstream of Chattanooga, Bragg realized that to prevent being cut off from his base in Atlanta, he would have to move south into Georgia. And on September 7th, 8th, and 9th, his army, being reinforced by the arrival of troops from Mississippi and East Tennessee, began moving southward, out of southeast Tennessee, out of Chattanooga itself, and southward into Georgia on several routes, including, perhaps most importantly, since it is the route along which Braxton Bragg and his headquarters itself moved, the Lafayette Road, coming south out of um, the immediate Chattanooga area, passing through Rossville Gap and Missionary Ridge, and then moving south. For the citizens who lived along the Lafayette Road, 
um, the, uh, the Hargraves, the Clouds, the Hines, the Stranges in the area of where the, um, uh, the city of Fort Oglethorpe is today on those September days of the 7th, 8th, and 9th. Huge clouds of dust would have been raised as um, brigade after brigade of Braxton Bragg's Army of Tennessee marched southward on that Lafayette Road down through where about 10 days later the Battle of Chickamauga would unfold and then crossing Chickamauga Creek at Lee and Gordon's Mill and eventually heading on down towards um, Lafayette, Georgia. As I said, Braxton Bragg himself on September the 8th and his headquarters group moved south down that very uh, corridor and certainly given the amount of dust, given the effects of the drought where the water sources and supplies were beginning to run short, um, men would stop at um, Colonel Cloud's Spring along the Lafayette Road, fill their canteens yet again, um, and then move on further southward towards their crossing of West Chickamauga Creek. With Bragg's passage um, southward, his rear um, was covered by some of the cavalry of Confederate um, Brigadier General Nathan Bedford Forrest, and small detachments of Forrest cavalrymen um, uh, operated along the Lafayette Road. The la on the day that the last Confederates left Chattanooga, September the 9th, some of the uh, Union forces of the deception operation would cross the Tennessee River and come over the tip of Lookout Mountain and occupy the city of Chattanooga and then move um, down to the Rossville area. And the next day, they would move southeastward into Georgia along the, um, the old Federal Road towards Ringgold. With that, the Confederate cavalry covering um, or, or in position astride the Lafayette Road withdrew a little bit further southward. Um, and um, in the early morning hours of September the 11th, we'll actually have the first clash um, on what most veterans would say was indeed eventually the Chickamauga battlefield when a uh, Union courier a, a, a member of the, uh, the staff of Union uh, 21st Corps Commander Thomas Crittenden um, and a small detachment uh, were trying to catch up uh, with their Corps Commander Tom Crittenden and having arrived at Rossville Gap they were informed that Crittenden and his staff had ridden on south on the Lafayette Road. And in those early morning hours of September the 11th, um, Cap um, Captain John McCook, one of the um, fighting McCooks of the, uh, the Civil War, will come south on the Lafayette Road trying to find, as he understood clearly, the misdirected um, uh, headquarters party of the 21st Corps. Um, but um, unknown to McCook at that moment, uh, Crittenden's men had indeed been able to move um, uh, across country and get on the correct route, the old Federal Road route. And as McCook and his small party approached a piece of low ground where the Lafayette Road went down a slight grade, crossed a, um, a, a wet weather drainage, um, and then began to rise up again. A drainage which is still there today, although um, somewhat difficult to see, um, in between the, um, uh, the, the eye doctor's place on the Lafayette Road and the, um, uh, and the uh, Saviton uh, gas station, there was a brief encounter by some of the men in McCook's small party and Confederate cavalry, and the first shots um, would be exchanged between the hostile forces on ground that most would eventually consider the Battle of Chickamauga. Now, at the, um, at the time of the Civil War, the alignment of the Lafayette Road in Fort Oglethorpe followed what today uh, would mostly be called the Old Lafayette Road. Um, so that, uh, that, that street that is, um, is behind the businesses along the Lafayette Road just south of, um, of Battlefield Parkway, um, and there's also a continuation of it on the north side of, of Battlefield Parkway. In fact, if you go along the old Lafayette Road there today behind the, uh, the, the Saviton uh, gas station, you can find a cast iron tablet which says the first firing on 
um, uh, or first firing at um, Chickamauga Battlefield that relates this incident between Captain McCook and his, um, his small party. The, um, uh, the, the action along the Old Lafayette Road will increase the next day, September the 11th, when as the federal movement down into Georgia um, continues, a brigade of Ohio and Kentucky soldiers under Colonel Charles um, uh, Harker will move south along the, um, the, the Lafayette Road push Nathan Bedford Forrest um, uh, cavalryman back in some skirmishing, in skirmishing in which one of those um, uh, cavalrymen will be injured and will be left um, to be cared for by Federals in the store along the Lafayette Road there near Colonel Cloud's house and uh, Cloud Spring. Um, on Colonel Cloud's um, uh, property was a general store as well as a church um, and this wounded um, cavalryman would be left um, in the, uh, the general store building. Uh, Harker's men will push on down the Lafayette Road through what becomes the Chickamauga Battlefield and take up post on the rise of ground overlooking the crossing of the Lafayette Road at Chickamauga Creek um, there at Lee and Gordon's Mill. And for the, uh, the next week, additional Union forces will move um, in small numbers up and down the Lafayette Road, most critically wagons bringing new loads of supplies to um, Harker's uh, brigade and the other Union troops of Tom Crittenden's 21st Corps, which will move over from their most advanced positions near Ringgold and take up position there at Lee and Gordon's Mill as well. And those empty wagons uh, would return uh, to Chattanooga as part of their journey um, to go westward to pick up new loads of supplies, moving again on that corridor of uh, the Lafayette Road. But this stretch of the Lafayette Road in, um, in, in what is today the, uh, the city of Fort Oglethorpe will begin to become more important even so when on September the 18th, the Confederate Commander Braxton Bragg after having missed a couple of opportunities to strike at the Union Army while it was divided um, over this mountainous terrain, realized that he had yet another chance, and this chance was to potentially march his troops up from Lafayette and in from Ringgold um, quickly enough so that portions of um, those forces could cross West Chickamauga Creek at places like Dalton's Ford, Thedford's Ford, Alexander's Bridge, Reed's Bridge, and as high up as Dyer's Bridge and Dyer's Ford, um, two points located just north um, of where Battlefield Parkway today crosses um, West Chickamauga Creek out at what is um, sometimes referred to as the, uh, the Double Bridges. Um, but Bragg wanted those troops to cross the creek and then swing westward and southward, get astride the Lafayette Road, and strike the Union left flank at Lee and Gordon's Mill. Um, Bragg envisioned um, that if he could get his troops in between the Union Army and Chattanooga, get his men astride the Lafayette Road, essentially in the area where today the city of Fort Oglethorpe is and the Battlefield Park, and then attack southward from that area, that he could hopefully drive the Union Army against the wall of Lookout Mountain to the southwest and crush the Union Army against that, um, that mountain wall and thereby allow him to then move up and reoccupy the um, city of Chattanooga where the Union Army Commander William Stark Rosecrans had, only, had been able to posi po uh, position only a very small um, garrison. Now, Braxton Bragg will indeed go to implement this plan on September the 18th, but there's one major problem for him. In addition to the communications issues within his own army, some route planning um, issues within his own army, he was facing an opponent in William Stark Rosecrans who had remembered one of the most important rules of military art and science, and that is to always consider what your enemy might do. 
And while Rosecrans had not been able to position uh, large enough bodies of troops at crossings of Chickamauga Creek, like Alexander's Bridge, Reed's Bridge, Dyer's Bridge, Dyer's Ford, or even Daffron's Ford further north where uh, Cloud Springs Road crosses Chickamauga Creek today. While Rosecrans had not been able to position large enough forces at those points to entirely prevent um, Bragg from uh, eventually getting across the creek at some of them or others, um, he had at least been able to position troops in, out in that zone and covering some of those crossings to give him early warning of the advance of uh, the, um, uh, the Confederate Army. And in fact, on September the 18th, Rosecrans quickly learned of the move of Confederate troops towards Chickamauga Creek um, and with the, small, the number of troops that he did have along uh, West Chickamauga Creek, they begin to delay as best as possible the approaching Confederates and prevent Braxton Bragg on the 18th of September from getting men across the creek sufficiently to then launch the attack at Lee and Gordon's Mill that day as he had originally envisioned and hoped. Overnight, Rosecrans reacted to Bragg's moves of the 18th and march troops um, uh, northward uh, from down in McLemore's Cove, from opposite crossings upstream of Lee and Gordon's Mill, such as Glass's Mill or Gower's Ford. These troops march past Crawfish Springs, where the city of Chickamauga is today, and then march northward, coming into what would be the western edge of the Chickamauga Battlefield um, unit today, and then arrive along the Lafayette Road in the area of the Kelly Farm, just south of where the Chickamauga Battlefield Visitor Center is located today, arriving about dawn and then going into position and breaking ranks to rest. And since it's morning and they loved coffee as much as we do, boil a cup of, uh, of coffee. But as it was clear that, it would li that there likely would be a significant encounter with the enemy that day, the medical personnel of those first two divisions that have arrived along the Lafayette Road begin to look for a place to potentially set up a field hospital to care for the injured that might result from any clash with the enemy. One of those divisions, John Brannan's 3rd Division of the 14th Corps, George Thomas's 14th Corps, Brannan's medical personnel begin looking for a field hospital location. One of the most critical things needed for a field hospital was not necessarily shelter, for, because in the medical wagon trains of each one of these divisions and corps of the Union Army were carried several very large hospital tents which could be erected to provide shelter if necessary. A safe place was indeed um, uh, desirable, but not necessarily um, so far away uh, from the, uh, the expected area of combat that it would be difficult to get the, uh, the wounded to that point. Most critically, what was needed was a source of water. And as the medical director of the uh, 3rd Division of the 14th Corps rode around, um, he would learn of the large spring at Colonel Carol A. Cloud's uh, farm and estate along the Lafayette Road. And the, third, the uh, Brannan's Division Field Hospital will be um, uh, directed to be established at um, the immediate area of Colonel Cloud Springs. Now, uh, as a result of this, Colonel Cloud's um, residence and estate um, and the features associated with it, as I mentioned, uh, a general store and a church along the, um, the Lafayette Road there, um, all become even more important landmarks for eventually the, uh, the Battle of Chickamauga. Not only do they become landmarks associated with this developing field hospital uh, of, the, uh, of Brannan's division of the 14th Corps, but they are um, uh, going to become uh, associated even with some actual battle action on the final day of the, uh, the Battle of Chickamauga. So it's often important to understand a little bit about um, Colonel Cloud's farm and estate there. 
Um, he, while the spring was located just to the west of uh, the old Lafayette Road, um, the, uh, uh, and, and here, uh, the old Lafayette Road or the stretch of the old Lafayette Road that I mentioned is that that is close to where it intersects with uh, modern Lafayette Road on its, um, its south end. Um, the, uh, the cloud or the spring was just a little bit off of the, uh, the road to the west. The general store and the church stood along the road itself uh, there in the area of the, uh, of the crystal. But Colonel Cloud's large home was located up on the, um, the easternmost hills of Missionary Ridge, just a little bit further to the west of the Lafayette Road than the, uh, the spring itself and ri on some rising ground. Um, Colonel Cloud was um, a rather well-to-do um, uh, individual, a South Carolina native originally, um, but a man who um, had spent much of his life already in uh, the Savannah area, had been involved in one of the most noteworthy of the pre-Civil War Georgia militia units, the Georgia Hawsers, um, and um, he had then moved into this area in the 1850s and acquired eventually um, 1,700 acres of, uh, of land. He was a more advanced agriculturalist. Um, he had purchased some of the early um, agricultural uh, machinery, had a, um, a mower or reaper for the, uh, the wheat that he grew in, um, in the, uh, the fields here. Um, and had a larger, more noteworthy house than many of the others in the immediate area. And so here in the area of Cloud's um, estate, um, the medical personnel of the 3rd Division of the 14th Corps begins to establish their field hospital, erecting a few of the, uh, the hospital tents uh, and taking advantage of the potential shelter offered by the general store, the church, and some of the Cloud outbuildings. And indeed, their anticipation of injured to be cared for bore um, uh, out to be true because of about 7.30 a.m., an encounter will occur to the east of the Lafayette Road out in the area of Reed's Bridge and J. Steam Sawmill. And as men of Brannan's division become engaged, wounded soldiers from that fight will be carried from the battle line, first by um, uh, comrades on litters or stretchers, back some distance to where um, aid is provided them by an assistant surgeon. Then they will be carried um, back a little bit, uh, bit further. If they can walk on their own, they would indeed um, uh, walk. But there, there they would meet a, a horse-drawn ambulance and then the ambulance would carry them, or if they could walk alongside the ambulance, lead them back by a marked and designated route to the division field hospital at Clouds. And there, the medical personnel, uh, the best surgeons, have been uh, formed into a, um, a surgical team. Uh, the other um, surgeons would examine the wounded as they come in. Those who, um, who required an operation, the extraction of a, um, a bullet from the body, um, if, um, if it was not a, a great deal of work, maybe uh, the resection of a, bro of a bone broken by the, um, the effects of that bullet, or depending upon the seriousness of that injury, maybe the necessity of amputating that uh, foot or um, leg or hand or arm um, from the, uh, the injured soldier. Um, and dozens and dozens of wounded men from the fighting out there along um, Reed's Bridge Road within the, uh, the Chickamauga Battlefield uh, unit today and in the woods just to the south of that will um, begin to, um, uh, to, to come back to clouds um, and to receive care. As the battle grew in size that uh, morning, another Union division that goes into action, Richard Johnson's division, it too having much, marched much of the night of September the 18th and the early morning hours of the 19th, um, as they prepare to go into action, their medical personnel will look for a place to erect a field hospital. They, becoming aware of Cloud Springs, will establish their hospital just a little bit to the south of the spring itself um, and take advantage of the water offered by, um, by the spring. 
Within Brannan's division, medical personnel will later record that a thousand injured soldiers would be cared for at the, uh, the uh, Brannan Division Hospital at Clouds on September 19, 1863. Now that care of injured care continued um, there at Clouds overnight on the night of the 19th and the early morning hours of the 20th. Some men um, who could stand transportation were indeed begun to be moved back towards um, uh, Chattanooga um, where buildings in Chattanooga, including some old Confederate hospital buildings, were beginning to be uh, prepared to receive the injured of this fight that is now unfolding here in the valley of West Chickamauga Creek. But on that morning of September the 20th, when the Confederate attack finally did begin, albeit three hours behind schedule, all of a sudden those um, uh, Union troops along the old Lafayette Road, including at the uh, field hospitals um, there, suddenly found themselves essentially on the front line. Because when former United States Vice President John Cable Breckinridge's Confederate division attacked westward and then southward along the Lafayette Road from the um, uh, first, um, uh, from uh, uh, just south of Reedsbridge Road to the um, uh, east of the, of the Lafayette Road. Uh, they'll move westward, cross the Lafayette Road in the area of the Visitor Center or Museum today, and then turn southward. As Breckinridge's men made that attack, the Confederate cavalry under Nathan Bedford Forrest moved westward on Breckinridge's right flank, or to his north, moved westward through the area that is today Fort Oglethorpe, and came out along the Lafayette Road itself um, between the battlefield park and um, even to the north of Cloud Springs. And this brings Confederate cavalry right into the midst of um, the Union Hospital complex there. And in fact, as all of this unfolded, that Union Hospital complex was briefly shelled by a Confederate artillery unit. That Confederate battery, the noteworthy 5th Company of the Washington Artillery from uh, New Orleans, had, um, had moved um, into a position where the visitor center is today, where John McFar McDonald's uh, farmstead was, uh, was located, and through the dust and smoke had observed what they thought was a large body of Union troops to their north about a mile, and briefly took them under fire. But when no hostile um, uh, intent was manifested by what they thought were those Union troops, that Louisiana battery had uh, lifted its fire, directed its fire to another point, and then moved on, unawares at that time that they had fired into the um, Union personnel, injured and medical and otherwise, that were around that Cloud Springs. And then Forrest Cavalry will, um, will arrive. Um, and capture that, um, that hospital complex at least for a time. But as the battle unfolded on that September the 20th, the last available Union troops in the immediate area of the battlefield, men of the Reserve Corps of Gordon Granger's um, uh, command of the Army of the Cumberland, ha who had been positioned up along the old Federal Road to the east of Rossville Gap, along what is today Lakeview Drive, in the area of what was then McAfee's Church and in the area of McAfee's Spring, today in the area of Noonan Springs Methodist Church and Lake Winnipesoka itself, being positioned there to take advantage of um, water from McAfee's Spring, the spring that today feeds the lake at Lake Winnipesoka. Those Union troops had discretionary orders to march to the sound of the guns if their commander, Gordon Granger, believed it was necessary. And in late morning, Granger will start south with first two of his three brigades and then the third, and they will move southward from um, the Lakeview Drive or the old Federal Road, uh, move southward essentially along the corridor of um, Cross Street for a time, and then on to the, uh, the corridor of the Lafayette Road. But as they move south, they encounter Nathan Bedford's Forest Cavalry across the Lafayette Road, and Granger's men will deploy into combat formation, move south, 
And since Granger uh, moving first with 4,000 men, eventually a total of 6,000 men, outnumbers Forrest um, significantly, Granger is able to push Forrest men back to the east of the uh, Lafayette Road. Granger's um, troops, first Whitaker's and then Mitchell's brigades, will pass by the area of the, uh, the Cloud Hospital. This will allow Union personnel at Clouds to evacuate some, some of the wounded back towards Chattanooga. But Granger's men were headed on to the battle itself. And as they moved southward, they have to get off of the corridor of the Lafayette Road just to the south of Clouds because with the drought of 1862, 1863, and the ground being tinder dry, um, exploding artillery projectiles fired by some of Forrest Calvary have set the dry brush on fire. And there's a brush fire burning along the Lafayette Road in the area today where um, the old post section would be. And Granger's men have to divert a little bit further to the west, kind of around that burning area, and then onto the Chickamauga battlefield to join the fight up on Snodgrass Hill, with the third of Granger's brigades taking position up on the hills of the eastern part of Missionary Ridge where um, Hutchison Hospital is located. And in fact, you can go to the front entrance there of Hutchison and see a cast iron tablet and two cannon that um, uh, mark that position of Dan McCook's brigade um, in the closing stages of the actual Battle of Chickamauga. With the passage of Granger's men southward, it allows the Confederate cavalry under Nathan Bedford Forrest to once again move westward and reoccupy the, um, the, the uh, or reseize the Union Hospital there at Cloud Spring. And in the coming day, can, as uh, the Confederates uh, win the Battle of Chickamauga and control the, uh, the battlefield with the Union Army having withdrawn over Missionary Ridge through McFarland Gap and back towards and to Chattanooga, Confederate officers of many commands will visit the hospital complex at Clouds. Some of those officers will seize um, uh, Union medical equipment and supplies that are there to care for their, um, their own injured because in the overall Battle of Chickamauga there are about 25,000 injured soldiers to be um, cared for. Um, but care of Union wounded continues at clouds in the days after the Battle of Chickamauga, and it is one of the places where wounded Union soldiers who had been left on the battlefield by their comrades as they were pushed off of the, uh, the field, where those wounded Union soldiers from various places on the battlefield would be consolidated. And about 10 days after the Battle of Chickamauga, Braxton Bragg and Rosecrans will agree to a, um, a, a truce and many of those wounded Union soldiers from both the large Union hospital complex down at Crawfish Springs and there at Clouds will be sent back into Union lines. The wagons and ambulances carrying them having come south out of um, Union lines around Chattanooga into Confederate lines with Confederate drivers um, where they picked up the wounded um, Union soldiers and then they went back northward um, along the Lafayette Road and back into uh, to Union lines. Um, and uh, as the Confederates get a handle on the uh, total number of um, injured, their own and even some captured Union to, uh, to be dealt with, eventually the field hospitals immediately adjacent to the Chickamauga battlefield will be able to be closed as the men ca being cared for there recover sufficiently to be moved further south to a general hospital or as in the case of many, they simply succumb to the effects of their injuries um, and die. By um, eight weeks after the Battle of Chickamauga, by the time of the Union success on Lookout Mountain and Missionary Ridge, the field hospitals that had been located immediately around the Chickamauga battlefield all seemingly are closed. There are no reports uh, from Union soldiers when they returned to the Chickamauga battlefield in very late November and early December of 1863 of seeing um, any operating field hospitals. Um, but um, uh, there is plenty of evidence that this horrific battle had unfolded. 
Because as men will, as Union soldiers will relate, in late 1863 and on into 1864, as in May of that year, Union, several Union columns and the, uh, beginning to move south in the Union drive towards Atlanta, uh, they will march through what be had, had become the scene of the Battle of Chickamauga. And they'll take a moment to pause and look at this ground which they know that they and some of their comrades had, um, had now hallowed, and they will note the devastation of those three days of battle that had unfolded along the corridor of the Lafayette Road. Residences and homes badly damaged and destroyed, fences burned and destroyed, trees cut down in some places for field fortifications, and everywhere there was the wreckage and carnage of war. Dozens and dozens of graves of soldiers who had died at the field hospital complex at Crawfish, or excuse me, at Cloud Springs would have been visible um, right in the immediate area of, um, of Colonel Clouds. And there were the abandoned pieces of, um, of equipment. And then further to the south, there were both the organized graves of Confederate soldiers and the, gray, the more rudimentary burial sites of Union soldiers scattered over what was the core of um, the Chickamauga Battlefield, what is today uh, the Chickamauga Battlefield Park. And in the years following the, um, uh, the Civil War, Clouds was still a place that served as a landmark for many veterans as they returned in the 1870s and 1880s to visit once again the ground that they had fought over on those September days in 1863. In fact, it was a choir singing in the church at Clouds that is noted by the two principal veterans, Ferdinand Vandeveer and Henry Van S. Boynton, who will promote the idea of creating the battlefield park in the 1880s. They um, wrote of a visit to the battlefield in 1888 and hearing that choir singing in Cloud's church and as they talked they begin to conceive the idea of creating what it is we have today. In fact maybe even more than what we um, have today, more than what they had, um, or, uh, 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 more than what they were originally able to, um, to create they envisioned a battlefield that would have extended up into what is today Fort Oglethorpe. And so as you drive along the Lafayette Road today, or along the old Lafayette Road, think about a larger um, Battle of Chickamauga, a battle that unfolded even along that Lafayette Road corridor today, much of that action noted um, by the cast iron tablets, monuments, and markers that you can find along the old Lafayette Road um, there south of the Battlefield Parkway. So I hope as um, we, over the next few weeks, have even greater attention paid to the, uh, to the Battle of Chickamauga, I hope that this um, will spark and um, uh, encourage you to, uh, to go out and learn more about uh, the important events that unfolded here because in that fall or late summer and fall of 1863, the eyes of our nation, or depending upon your perspective then or now, two nations were focused on what was happening here in this greater region and were shocked by the reports of the uh, scale, magnitude, and loss associated with the Battle of Chickamauga.